There is one extra complication which I need to introduce you to, which is in some physical systems, this is an energy diagram here. In some systems, you can have multiple states with the same energy. So what I've drawn here is I've got two different states here which have the same energy E1, and then I've got four different states which have the energy E2 and five that have energy E3. So we call this degeneracy. It has degenerate energy levels, meaning there's multiple states with the same energy. And that's usually denoted by the letter G. So we would say that here G1, that's the number of states with energy E1 is two. G2 is equal to four. G3 here is equal to five. So in other words, Gn is equal to the number of states with energy En. So all of the work we did before, we were focusing on particular states. Like I focused on some state here, let's say psi 1, and some other state here, psi 2. And we said that the probability that the atom is in state psi 1, let's say, is proportional to e to the minus e1 over kBT. So just to be extra clear, this is the probability that the atom is in state, particular state psi 1, okay? It's not asking, not the probability that the atom is in, has energy E1, because, you know, it could also be in this state, but that we didn't consider yet. Okay, so, so far I'm just talking about a particular state. If I want to know the probability that, that the atom has energy E1, let's write it like this. This is the probability... that the atom has energy E1. That's the same as saying it's the probability that the atom is in state psi 1 or psi 2, right? Sorry, not psi 2. Let me call it a psi 1a and psi 1b. Let's call this one here psi 1b. So if it's either in psi 1a or psi 1b, uh, either one of those, it would have the same energy E1. So how do I do that? It could be in either this one or this one. So if I have, uh, it's a joint probability or a, um, sort of independent probability as I add the two probabilities. So that's going to be equal to the probability that it's in psi 1a plus the probability that it's in psi 1b. But they have the same energy, so it's just going to be 2 times e to the minus e1 over kBT. And more generally, the probability that the atom has energy En, let's say, I have to multiply by the degeneracy. It's going to be Gn times e to the minus En over kBT. Sorry, not equals, proportional to. So that's how you handle degenerate energy levels, is you just multiply by the number of states with that energy level. Because if you think about it, if I've got five states here, then it's five times more likely to be in one of those states than if there were just one state, because there's just like more places for it to be, right? So the probability is bigger if you have more states available. So we worked out these relationships for the probability that an atom is in a particular state, psi n, or the probability that the atom has an energy e n. And those are given by the formulas up in the corner there. Let's focus on a particular example, which is a, a very useful one, which is a hydrogen atom. So maybe you're familiar with the energy levels of a hydrogen atom. Let me try to draw some of them out here. It's not to scale. I'm just kind of drawing these. Um, there's more. So 
started drawing some of the energy levels of the hydrogen atom. And maybe you remember the, the formula for the energy level of a hydrogen atom. Hopefully this is familiar. 13.6 EV with a minus sign over N squared. So the first one has energy minus 13.6 EV. The second one has minus 13.6 EV over 4, because 2 squared, this is n equals 1, n equals 2, and so on. And this turns out to be minus 3.4. And then this one would be minus 13.6 EV over 9, and so on. And there's also degeneracy here. So you may be familiar with the fact that there's more than one energy level with energy. So there's more than one state with energy level thir minus 13.6 EV. So in fact, this one has a degeneracy of 2. This one has a degeneracy of 8. And for the chemists among you, the 2 here is the 1s2. So that's two states with energy E1. And the 8 here is the 2s2, 2p6. So two states here, six states here adds up to eight. Okay, so that's the hydrogen atom. And now let's start asking some questions about this. So the question is, let's consider hydrogen atoms on the sun. So we have a temperature of 6,000 Kelvin here. How much more likely is it to find an atom in the sun in a particular state with n equals 1 compared to an atom uh, in a particular state with n equals 2. So in other words, what I'm looking for here is I want to know the ratio of these probabilities. The probability that the atom is in some particular state with n equals 2, and I guess I want it the other way around. I want to know how much more likely p of psi 1. Sorry, psi 2. So this should be a number which is bigger than one. It should be more likely to find it in the ground state than the first excited state. And we can figure it out now by using the Boltzmann factor. So this is gonna be equal to psi one over P of psi two. It's just the ratio of the Boltzmann factors, e to the minus e one over KBT divided by e to the minus e two over KBT. And that's e to the minus e1 minus e2 over kbt. Okay. Plug in the numbers. Okay, so there I plugged in the numbers for e1 and e2. e1 is minus 13.6 EV, e2 is minus 3.4. Whoops, I forgot the units here, EV. And uh, plug it in. Be careful with the units. So I got to put in KB, Boltzmann constant in EV. So always check the units here. The Kelvin cancels out here, and then the EV cancels out here. So the units went away, which they should go away when I have E to something. There should be no units left. And so I had to put in Boltzmann constant in EV. So be careful with that. Okay, and this is uh, some big number. So it's a big number. It's uh, much more likely to find an atom in the ground state than the first excited state, even at temperatures of 6,000 Kelvin on the sun. Let's consider one other question. So now basically the same idea, hydrogen atoms on the sun, temperature 6,000 Kelvin. How much more likely is it to find an atom with energy E1 than energy E2. So in the previous example I was thinking about a particular state in n equals 1 and a particular state n equals 2. But now I want to know just how likely is it that it has energy E1 compared to energy E2. So for this I need to think about the ratio of the probabilities, these two. P of E1 divided by P of E2. And that's G1 e to the minus e1 over kbt divided by g2 e to the minus e2.
over KBT. Okay. So I have to take into account the degeneracy. Right? There's more than one state with energy n equals 2 with, with energy minus 3.4 EV. And so because there's more states, I have to I have a larger probability than I would if there was only one state. Okay, so uh, now let's work this out a little bit. So this becomes G1 over G2, and then everything else here is the same as what we had before. So this turns out to be um, E to the E2 minus E1 over KBT. So this is, and that number is exactly the same as what we had before, e to the 10.2 over 0 0.517. Okay, so I have the same thing I have before, except I'm multiplying by this factor because of the, the degeneracies are different. So g2 is equal to 8, g1 is equal to 4. So it's equal to 2 over 8 times e to the 10.2 divided by 0 0.517. So it's 1 quarter e to the 10.2 divided by 0 0.517. It's still a huge number, big number, but uh, not as big as before because of this factor of 1 quarter here. This is a smaller number than before because it's more likely to find uh, atom with energy E2 than it is E1 because the degeneracy is larger. There's more states, there's eight states with energy E2, or there's only two states, energy E1. And that's why it becomes a little bit more likely to find atoms in any of those eight states um, than it did in the previous example. So just be very careful when you're ask, whether the question is asking you, are you looking at the probability of a particular state with some energy, or are you looking at the probability that of any state with that energy? Um, that's when you have to know to include this G or not. So let me summarize this important topic. So if we go back to the previous lecture, if you have an isolated system, all microstates are equally likely. So the probability that you're in a certain state just depends, or a certain macro state, depends on how many microstates lead to that macro state. Now the system we considered in this lecture is something which is not isolated. That's uh, when I have a system which is in contact with a reservoir. So you've got something in contact with a large reservoir at temperature T. That's not isolated. The system is exchanging energy with the reservoir. But the system together with the reservoir is considered an isolated system. So then we can use all the tools that we learned from before. And so we reasoned that the probability that the system is in some state is proportional to the multiplicity of the reservoir, the number of microstates that the reservoir has in that configuration. And that fact allowed us to relate the probability that the system has some energy to the properties of the reservoir, like its entropy and its temperature. And so we were able to get these important formulas saying that the probability that the system is in some state is related to E to the minus E1, the energy of that state, divided by Kb times the temperature of the reservoir. And the difference between these two formulas is one of these is, is dealing with a particular state, psi1, and the other one is dealing with all of the states which have energy E1. So if there's more than one state with, with the same energy E1, you have to multiply by this factor, which is called the degeneracy. That's the number of states that have that energy. So that's where we are so far. Now, where we have to go from here is to, to work on this proportionality. So maybe I don't want to know proportional, I want to know exactly what the probability is. I mean, in this lecture, all we did was worry about the ratio of probabilities, but maybe I want to know exactly what it is. I don't want to know ratios. So then we have to figure out what actually goes in here other than this Boltzmann factor. And so that's where we're going to go next.